In this video, I will analyze the footage quality of the new DJI Mavic 3 in high dynamic range situations and in low light using the two color modes, normal and the log in H.265. I have already done a review about the quality of footage made with this drone, covering all other situations. So this video is a sort of follow-up. You probably want to refer to that video, so you will find the link at the end of this one and in the description below. As usual, you will find info and prices in the description. Normal mode has been developed by Hasselblad under the name of Natural Color Solution. It is the mode meant to be used straight off the camera. In my previous video, I found this mode excellent and practically ready to use. Throughout this video, I will show samples of the ungraded footage and then after a very light touch of color grading. In most cases with drone, we have high dynamic range situations when the sky and elements on the ground are on the frame, as the sky is obviously much brighter. In this example, with the sun on the left at 8 o'clock, the range is moderately high and the image is perfectly usable out of the box. With this clip, we get closer to the direction of the sun, which is to the left at 10 o'clock. The way natural color mode reproduces the cloud is always a thing of beauty, and the detail is stunning in the building in the foreground. There is no hint of moiré, which used to be a plug in models of the Mavic line of the previous generation. The same scene a couple of hours later, closer to sunset. The reflection of the sun on the clouds are much stronger, but the rendition is still excellent. There is no flare or loss of detail, despite the proximity of the sun. Now the sun is at the edge of the frame, the foreground is almost a silhouette, and the sky and the clouds have an excellent structure. We can recover the shadows, and the footage holds still very well, just the tiniest loss of contrast in the left border. Excellent result! And now we have the sun rising in the middle of the frame, although it's not yet at full strength, and partially covered by clouds. Again, we can have the foreground as a silhouette to focus on the sky and the sea, or we can extract something from the foreground by raising the shadows. In both cases, the footage is really good. Now, the worst kind of footage torture the most extreme dynamic range. We have the full sun in full strength in the middle of the frame, uncovered by clouds. The result is astonishing. The structure of the sky is almost perfect, without flare, chromatic aberration, or loss of detail. As I have noticed from my video about photography, the Hasselblad lens is by far the best seen on a prosumer drone, and a lot of effort has been put into developing the natural color solution. Hats off to Hasselblad. Normally, the 8-bit color modes are quite fragile in post-processing compared to the 10-bit ones, like the log. I'm going to push the file a bit to see how far we can go. In this clip we saw earlier, after lifting the shadows, the color of the sky doesn't look perfectly natural. Modifying individual color in 8-bit modes tend to create very quickly color banding, chromatic noise, and other artifacts. Let's try to darken the sky a bit. Now, let's slightly modify the hue. And finally, let's increase the saturation. As you can see, no artifact at all, and this is an outstanding performance for an 8-bit file. Now some very similar footage shot in the log. It is a flat profile in 10-bit color, in theory much more suitable for heavy post-processing. With the Mavic 2 Pro and Air 2S, I'm not a big fan of the result obtained with this mode, and I much prefer the other 10-bit mode, HLG. With this new DJI drone, I have had mixed results with the logs so far. 
In certain light condition, I can easily get excellent results. In other case, I have to work a lot to find natural color and the correct amount of contrast and saturation. I have not yet found the perfect set of LUTs for this drone, and this is understandable, being a brand new model. It is indeed a very solid color mode, and it is able to respond well to any sort of post-processing torture. It is the one to use to match footage to a specific color scheme for a project. While in previous models of the Mavic line I would use only a 10-bit mode, almost exclusively HLG, in the Mavic 3 the normal mode is so good that I find myself using it quite often. I am eagerly waiting the release of the HLG mode, which should be available next January, to compare it to the two existing one. When I tested the R2S for footage in low light, I found it outstanding, in a totally different league compared to previous models of the Mavic line. Also in recent years, the noise reduction program called NIT Video has reached excellent performance. Only three years ago, noise in footage was a huge issue. But I find that using the R2S together with NIT Video, the issue of noise in low light footage had become irrelevant. You will find info about NIT Video in the description below. The Mavic 3, with its much larger Micro Four Thirds sensor, is expected to perform even better in low light. But as long as it can produce low light footage as good as the one of the R2S, I would be perfectly satisfied. As you can see, the two scenes are extremely dark. Let's see if the mighty Mavic 3 can bring them back to life without introducing too much noise. Let's go with normal mode first. At ISO 400 the clip is already very good. The files generated by the normal mode are very solid and it is possible to recover plenty of info from the shadows without introducing noise. There is a little bit of noise in the sea and the sky, but this level is a piece of cake for neat video. At ISO 800 there is a slight increase in noise, but again perfectly manageable. At ISO 1600 the Fuji is still quite usable if needed, although my choice would be to use 400. At ISO 3200 the quality falls apart, but I really don't see any reason to use it. D-Log mode has only two values for ISO, 400 and 800. At 400 the clip is not bad, with just a bit more noise than in normal mode, but not an issue at all after the noising. At 800 there is an increase in noise, but the footage is still very usable if needed. Click on this link to watch my video about footage quality with the Mavic 3, which is actually the first part of this one. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it.